So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a snow effect to any photograph. It's really super simple. Let's get started. This is the photograph I've chosen to work with. It was technically snowing on the day that I took it. If you can probably just about see in the background, there are those little signs of bokeh, those little bits of light where the uh, the snow has fallen in the right direction, but the, it didn't really kind of come across as well on the whole image. So I wanted to add actually a little bit more um, just to really kind of give the proper feeling as to what the weather and what the atmosphere was like when we took this portrait. So to start off with, we're going to need a new layer. So we're going to add a blank layer on top of what we've got already. So we're going to go to layer, new, and we'll call this one snow. So that's what we're adding. Now, what we need to do with this layer is just to fill it so it's completely black. So we can do that by going to edit, fill, and then we'll just choose black. So it's completely filled it with black. So that's not really doing much, but what we actually need to do now is start to make those little small elements um, of snow appear. And we can do that by going up to filter, and then we come down to noise and press add noise. So noise is not something we normally want in a photograph, but this is part of the effect. So bear with me as we go through this. Let's kind of increase the amount here. Now you can set it anywhere. I think somewhere between maybe around about kind of 20 or 30% um, would be absolutely fine. Now change the distribution from uniform to Gaussian and then change it from monochromatic. I'll change it to monochromatic because you can see at the minute we've got lots of color noise and obviously there's no color really in snow or at least not as we see. So we're going to change that to monochromatic so all our little dots become white. Okay, so still not looking perfect, but that's absolutely fine. What we need to do now is actually make this larger. So we're going to stretch these little white dots to make them bigger, and that's what's going to form the snow. So to do that, again, we can go over to Edit, and we're going to go then to Transform and Scale. At the top here, we've got our width and our height values as set in percentages. Now we want to stretch our image, so let's maybe make it about 500. Um, so it'll change the width to 500% and same as the height. So when we're happy, we just hit OK. So now we've made those uh, that noise effect a lot, lot larger, but we still can't see our image behind it. So that's dead simple to change. All we need to do is just change our blending mode on our layers panel. So make sure we've got our snow layer selected. I'm going to take it from normal and then we'll take it down to screen because what screen does is masks all the black and just leaves any other remaining white tones in there which is fantastic so we're now getting a little bit closer to the effect that we're looking for but now everything looks a little bit flat there's no kind of motion and obviously we need a little bit of motion with with the snow to suggest that it's falling from the sky so now to do that we're going to return back to our filter option and we're going to go down to blur and motion blur and now this is all set basically upon the, the direction of the snow because it's not necessarily always a case of going to drop top to bottom. It may be a bit more angled. So I'm just going to tweak things around a little bit with the circle. Just move, move it a little bit more. Now you can change the distance to make things look a little bit smoother, but it tends to remove the snow falling effect. So I'm going to just reduce that a little bit more down to around about Let's take it down to about 20 pixels itself so there we go okay so now we've got our effect we can start to blur out not necessarily blur out we can start to mask out some aspects of that but before i do i think what we'll actually do is maybe create another version of this here so we're actually going to duplicate the snow layer now this is all by choice you don't have to take it this far this far you can leave it as it is here if you wanted to um, so this is kind of next stage is a bit optional really so all we need to do is just go to layer and duplicate layer. So let's call this snow two. So you can see now it's completely amplified the effect because we've doubled it up a little bit more. Let's return up to filter. And instead of now just having those kind of single streaks of snow, we're going to try and make some areas and some parts of it a little bit more chunky. Maybe look a little bit more like bigger flakes of snow. So we go down to filter, pixelate, and now we choose crystallize. So this is the panel here, and you can see already it's going to change that noise effect that we've added to make it look a bit more shapely, a bit more like snowflakes, um, or certainly larger chunks. 
Now we can control the cell size as to how big it is by moving the slider left and right. So you've got to judge it depending upon your image as to how kind of big you want those flakes to be. Anywhere around about 20 to 30 I think would be fine, but let's settle with 20 for this image. Now again, that can't be sat on its own. It also needs to have a little bit of motion blur added to it as well. Otherwise, it's going to look a bit stationary. So we're going to go back to that blur. And then again, we want the same direction. So it's remembered where we were before. And we'll add that again into there. Now, what we can do to make this a little bit more punchy, a little bit more kind of cleaner in terms of the effect, is to add a levels adjustment layer. So we should go to our adjustment layer option at the very bottom of the layers panel and choose levels. So we're going to make sure now that any changes that we make happen to all the layers underneath. So if we choose our clipping layer icon there, and now it's just a case of being able to move the slider. So we start from the dark end and we'll push it across. And now you can see it's going to get rid of anything that falls within that dark remit of the histogram and just to push it down a little bit more. So the effect isn't as overcooked as it was before. Now we're just drawing it back a little bit. You'll see if you move the white slider, it's not really going to have much of an impact. So it's all coming from the darker ends here. So we can crush it as much as we want, but really because we're pushing lighter elements, trying to make them a little bit darker, there's only so far that you can go. But once you're happy with that, you can then just close that mask there. And now if you wanted to go back and actually add some layer masks um, and take away some of the snow effect from around your subject's face as it is here, that's always kind of quite useful as well. So let me just show you that. So we'll add our layer mask to our first snow layer. Now we're going to have to do this for each one. So this initial version that I'm going to do may not show that much change. But because I don't want the actual snow to be falling in front of her, I wanted to keep it behind her. I'm just going to use that layer mask and just slowly start to blend the layer mask so the snow appears behind her. Fantastic. Now again, if you wanted to make any more uh, further changes, you can just reduce the opacity of layers if you wanted to as well. So I'm going to do that to both of our layers just to reduce it around similar point to around about 75%. There we go. Superb. So we've got a lovely background. So from where we started with, with our original image, if you just go back a couple of steps, you can see we've got those little orbs, that little bit of bokeh of snow. It's really, really hard to actually see kind of clearly exactly what was going on. But now we can see much more clearly. So we've added that snow effect. We've not kind of pushed it over the top of our model. We've been able to kind of keep our subject nice and clean. But it's a really, really simple way of being able to add that snow effect that you can make your images that little bit more atmospheric, a bit more festive if it's a more of a Christmas portrait or a lovely winter landscape. If you've not been able to actually capture the snow perfectly in camera, this is a nice way of adding it. Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Keep looking out for iPhotography for more. Thank you for watching.